Hello, welcome to the land of Kek Yak. My name is Laurel. Okay, today I want to show you um, how I've been doing lessons with my fourth grader using McGuffey's Third Eclectic Reader. The revised editions are my favorite, although I do, I like the originals also. But let me show you what we were doing. And I just did like a, <laughs> like a six week in curriculum update, like how things are going. And then I like immediately changed how I was doing his language arts, <laughs> which I think I kind of talked about in that video. I kind of said, I was like thinking about making some changes. I think just making that video and like sitting with my thoughts on that stuff actually spurred me to just go ahead and do it. So I guess I'm gonna kind of show you two different ways I have used um, resources to do um, language arts with the third McGuffey reader. Okay, so like all last year, all through third grade, um, and then into up until just this last week, I have used the unofficial RC notebook level three. And let's see, I was gonna show you his reading pages. So let me see, how do we start at the beginning of the year? Okay, so what I was doing is I was using this reading lesson page. So I've got a section up here for phonics slash you know, affix squares, and then a new reading words section, and then a reading um, or copy work illustration section here. What I was doing is I was pulling out, I was basically making a weekly, we're doing about one lesson a week. Once we get to the third reader, I kind of go to uh, one lesson a week flow. I really like just for fluency reasons to just read those passages over and over until they're just really reading them with expression, proper pauses and inflection. They really understand them. Um, they really, their comprehension has really been brought up since the first day. And then there's just so much that you can get out of these passages. The reader itself, about halfway, it kind of changes. It starts in the beginning, the first half of the book, with the passage vocabulary pulled out here. And in the beginning, the focus is really obviously just on decoding more so the words, although, you know, we did always talk about the meaning of the words as well. Well, then about halfway through, it changes over to where at the end of the passage, the vocabulary words are pulled out and there's less of them. And they give you the definition and then where they're found in the passage. I just think these readers, I have still not come across, and I look at everything. I look at every decodable text that I come across. Um, I looked at, I've looked at other readers, like I did buy what's the Treadwell and something. And at one point, I think it ended up, I think I put it in one of the little free libraries in our town. But nothing, nothing, nothing compares in my mind to the McCuffey readers still for um, gently um, bridging them through phonics and then um, now touching more on vocabulary and reading comprehension and different types of reading passages and all just so quality and with such good morals, more complex uh, construction of sentences and stuff um, just really gives their little brains a workout. And it just lets you have those conversations all the time. It's not dumbed down writing like we are seeing in a lot of educational text today. Okay, so I was originally, and you can still do it this way, if you are one of the, if you're one of um, my people that are using my unofficial RC notebooks and you were curious about how we were doing our lessons on a weekly basis, I was just establishing a flow. I was pulling out any, um, if I saw any special phonics I hadn't seen before, um, or like, like I was just saying E-R-O-R-A-R, -R -R, right? Even as a uh, suffix or a prefix, we were just making our own little flashcards. Like I was just looking, just usually just, you know, ahead of time, like maybe over the weekend, but sometimes it was just on Monday morning. <laughs> and we were just making little flashcards for even sometimes like root words, but suffixes, prefixes, stuff like that, right? Just ourselves, right? I'd say the origin, the meaning, maybe pronunciation, some example words. So we were just learned, looking those up and that's called you know, incidental study versus explicit teaching, I guess. 
But so it's just incidentally, as those word parts were coming up in the vocabulary, we were adding them to our list, I would have a flashcard review that they, he would do um, every morning or every, at the start of everything. And so maybe one day we would just do the new reading words. I'd say maybe copy the words um, and highlight the affixes, right? That matched up with here. Then maybe the next time, you know, we'd copy in, um, we do that wrong pile, right pile. Sometimes when it got to be a lot, he, like, he was up to 30 flashcards at this point. So we sometimes we would always include new ones if there was new ones in the passage, but if there were also just some that he missed on his right pile, wrong pile, we could add those in too, just choose six to focus on for the week. So then he'd be filling those in. Then write the new words, write the new words, highlight the affixes, discuss the meanings, um, read the passage, moral of the story, we talk about that. Uh, write a reading word sentence and draw a picture. It looks like he just drew me a picture. So I just came up with our own weekly like flow and I would sometimes I would kind of adjust this. So again, so he did his review, he put in his word parts, his new reading words, I said find words one through four in the passage and explain their meaning as used. So he wrote down what those ones were and then he would just orally tell me what they meant and how they were used. I said, read the passage, describe the characters and draw them. So I helped him set up a little table here. We said, these are the uh, characters that, and then we, he came up with, he would just tell me some words. And these ones I just wrote down for him and he drew a little picture off to the side, it was a boat. Then he kind of did the same thing with like the next set of words. Then I was teaching him about genre. If it was, is this fiction or is this nonfiction? And so this was just me. We were just really just learning as we went until we, I kind of just experimented until I came up with the weekly routine that I liked. I think the last day we would discuss our favorite passage part and we'd illustrate it. There was a word like wait. If there was any homophones, I'd always point that out to him. Like there's wait. W-A-I-T and wait, W-E-I-G-H-T. One's a verb, one's a noun. So that's how, I mean, I, it's not exact. I don't have like an exact formula because I was changing it like over time. It changed like how we were, we were doing stuff, but you know, he got more and more independent with it. And uh, we kept adding more of those prefixes and suffixes to our review pile. Right, three ways to spell, oh, shun, if we came across the shun spellings. So, oh, here's another one fun thing you can do with words. You could have them look at their reading words, and I just made him, I think I made him the blanks, and I would have him write, I'd say, which word means, and I would say the meaning of a word, and he could look at his words, and he would know, because we'd already discussed it earlier in the week, which word meant what, or, you know, or it was a review, but it was kind of like giving us a little, if you got it wrong, I'd say, nope, that's not it, try again, <laughs> you know, or I might just tell him. But just have him like looking at his word list. Um, I gave him an I gave him a definition for poetry in this one, right? Words are arranged towards meaning, sound, and rhythm. The words express an emotion or idea. Then I had a question and answer. Compare the poem with the biblical Lord's Prayer. Do the meanings match? He said yes. I think this was one that was like a rewriting of the Lord's Prayer, but we read the Lord's Prayer too. So, anyways, you can just do you can do a lot. A lot with that simple page. I also, this was just something I thought might be worth mentioning. If you needed a spelling scope and sequence, if you're like, I kind of want to start with something like phonics or affixes or something, but I don't know that I want to use my McGuffey reader. I'm, I'm doing RC. Uh, I included this with the first, my RC, unofficial RC notebook level one. And this gives like a first through eighth grade, like an example spelling scope and sequence. So let's say if you had a third grader, you could start with beginning consonant, Q-U. You could do these blends, the, these digraphs, silent letters, um, Y used as a vowel, vowel digraphs, diphthongs, R-controlled vowels, these grammatical endings, E-D and I-N-G, um, compound words, and contractions. So you could focus on that for all of grade three, right? Um, and then grade four have another set. So you could work on those in those sections if you wanted to. You could use your vocab words from your RC books here instead of McGuffey readers. So yeah, I meant for this page to be versatile for however, however people wanted to use it. 
But yeah, this is included with the first RC notebook, but. Okay, so that's how I'd been doing it, like loosely. Yeah, and then I'd been pairing it with Copyworker Grammar. We've been doing our Gentle Grammar, right? He's now on level three. I think this was level two still, but on our, instead of copy work, I chose to focus on grammar for our writing practice. And then of course I was doing, you know, my McGuffey spelling and I was doing that program, but I was doing it on the page here just to keep it all in one. Okay. There was nothing wrong. Like here's one that I, I filled out for him, but he didn't actually end up doing it because we switched over. So that, I don't know if that gives you some ideas to how you can structure a reading lesson with your McGuffey reader. So what I changed it to, the new thing is um, I revamped my companion notebook, my reading and writing companion notebook that I made to go with the third reader. So it is looking like this. So there are a couple of like, you know, pages at the beginning you might want to look at. There's a weekly schedule for Monday through Friday. And I did kind of color code them and you'll see what I mean. And then I did some reading comprehension notes. So talking about things you can consider, right? Like a pair contrast, main ideas, supporting details and summaries, sequencing, author's purpose, drawing conclusions, making inferences, context clues, cause and effect, back to opinion, prediction, and genre. So that's stuff that uh, if you need to refer to back to the definition, you can look here. We talked about figurative language, similes, metaphor, hyperbole, personification. I honestly don't know how to say that word. Is it cynic doc? Cynic dosh? Onomatopoeia? <laughs> those are words. I can never say those words. Then we talked about the genres, what a genre is, you know, fiction, nonfiction, and here's some fiction genres, here's some nonfiction, and some other like poetry and drama. So what I was wanting to do is to take myself actually out of the teaching equation so much with him for his McGuffey lessons. So this week is the first week we've started using the companion notebook. And so I'm trying to, I'm taking some time this week to teach a little bit about the new pages he'll be looking at. Hopefully we can build up, you know, he can work on this a little bit more independently over time. So he knows what NA means not applicable because not everything will be applicable to every passage because there are different types of writing. Um, then we split up the vocabulary words that went with each passage. We've split them up uh, throughout the week. So he had like two on this day. He did mar and accents. Okay, so he is going to look up the words, write down the definitions, write them in their sentences from the passage and illustrate where they came from. So this one was from stanza two, because it was a poem. And then he is doing his grammar or writing exercises and I'm still having him work in gentle grammar for his writing. So that's what that is. So he's got three pages every day for language arts. So the next day it's all in red. This day we're going over main idea, plot structure, point of view, sequence, story elements, and theme. And then his vocabulary words. His word was eternity that day. That's a noun. He copied where he saw it. And he drew the stanza. The drawing is so cute to see. And then he did another day of gentle grammar exercises. Third day is purple, discuss and make notes, figurative language, important information, drawing conclusions, text features, predictions, and inferences. Um, he had to have some help with like figurative language. So we talked about, you know, there was a metaphor in there and we discussed that. Uh, vocabulary word was endure. So I copied where he saw it. He drew the stanza. And on to his gentle grammar. And um, the next day was like the orange day is, starts out with a summary. Uh, I had to help him with this. I had to like, uh, he didn't quite understand what a summary was. So we wrote this one together. Actually, obviously it's my handwriting. I wrote it and then he drew his picture. 
and his vocabulary word was airing. And he did his grammar and writing exercises. And then green day is teacher dictates vocabulary words and sentences from the passage. I think I meant for this to be or I would dictate the sentence and he would write it. But I think he just went and he just copied the definitions and I didn't actually get to dictate to him that day, which is okay. We just ran out of time, I think. Grammar and writing, so gentle grammar again. And the last thing was sentence stem. So pick from the following and complete. So he just had to finish a sentence stem and then it starts over, right? Then we've got a new passage on this week. We're working on the seven sticks. So, and he is doing spelling. So don't worry about doing spelling in here because I'm just having him, it's easier for me just to have him do it in his spelling workbook. So he's still on McGuffey Spelling level three. And so, yeah, I've just been having him do, so I started him off <laughs> up where, there, he got started in lesson 16. He started working in his book. And so he's just been doing, we've been doing the work in his book based on where I was. Selling test day. So yeah, this, he, it's easier for me just to have him use the um, specifically designed pages to do his spelling in versus the um, trying to make another page to fit in his notebook. So for this is his language arts, right? So he just we usually warm up with actually spelling first. Then he reads his McGuffey passage and then he does his notebooking pages on that and then he uses his gentle grammar uh, for his writing that he does in there as well. So we do that and then for all his other subjects, we I made the companion to the companion, the everything else level three. And he's doing the Bible, social studies and math combination right now. And so this will just round out his day. So he does, I need to fill those pages in, but you know, he does his Bible reading and he answers uh, the questions and then we do whatever we're doing for social studies, whatever book we're in or lesson we're doing. Sometimes we're doing, this is from a read aloud and we just pick something. We do read alouds, we just pick something to focus in on. So we were focusing in on olive orchards and olive like harvesting and stuff. And then he does his math. And then when we are done, when we're done doing our social studies for the year or history, um, I will switch out, I'll make a new one with the combination that's like Bible, science and math, because I just, uh, I decided it's just easier for me right now just to split up science and social studies and not try to do them at the same time. We just started a new book, uh, Read Aloud for our social studies, Black Hawk. So we just took a copy of the cover. And I learned Black Hawk was a real person. I just learned that today. And that's one of my Good and the Beautiful uh, readers. Yeah, and the Good and the Beautiful comes with note, like um, student explorer notebooks. And so I just use those, the lessons that have those pages with them. We just may use them and put them straight into his book his notebook but yeah that's how I'm keeping like everything nice and organized for him we made these into little flip things about the Sahara and stuff the different climates in Africa so that's like pretty much there's his little stack of goodies and he's got you know his math book what other things he has to keep track of his math book you know, he has his dictionary and stuff over there, but yep. So there is my update on my third graders and um, 
curriculum and how we're staying organized and how we've changed our reading lessons. Kind of just reorganize our language arts a little bit. But yeah, I hope that gave everybody ideas. I was looking for ideas and I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye. Uh -huh.